Welcome to my sewing room. I have such an exciting technique for you today. It is called Organdy Madeira Window Pane. And the best part is, it looks so complicated, but it is so easy. Let me share with you a beautiful curtain. It's even on its little gold curtain rod. This is the Organdy Madeira Window Pane. And you see we've used machine embroidery in between the window panes, or inside the window panes. How about a beautiful pillow with the Organdy Madeira window pane? Once again, with machine embroidery, and has two wonderful lines that go around it. It really looks a whole lot more complicated than it is. I promise you, it's easy. A beautiful, beautiful older girl's dress. Let me bring this around here. So, and I'm gonna hold it up so you can see the pretty skirt. We have Organdy Madeira window panes on the collar. And then look at the skirt with the beautiful, by the way, this is pink handkerchief linen, and there is pink and green uh, embroidery inside each window pane, and there's a double Madeira uh, skirt on the bottom of the dress, but what I really love is the organdy Madeira window panes with the machine embroidery. Now, I have a lovely lady's blouse with the organdy Madeira window panes right around the neckline of the blouse. But the big secret is right here on the sleeves. Is that beautiful or what? The organdy Madeira window panes that go down the sleeve on this beautiful handkerchief linen ladies blouse. And let me show you a silk dupioni child's dress with the organdy uh, Madeira window panes on both the collar. And look at the skirt. I think the skirt ones are so pretty. The uh, organdy Madeira window panes on the skirt. And once again, we have used machine embroidery inside each window pane. Now, I promised you this is easy, so come on over to the technique boards with me. You are going to be so thrilled when you see just how easy it is to do organdy Madeira window panes. First of all, I have some fashion fabric, which I've used a, a linen here, and I have water-soluble stabilizer I put on top. Now, I have drawn on my window pane, which in this case is an oval. I drew it onto the uh, linen. Now then, the next step is to straight stitch around, attaching the water-soluble stabilizer to the linen, T stitching around this pretty little oval. Then I'm going to cut away both the linen and the water soluble stabilizer from the inside and clip the curves. Now the next step is to turn this right side out, which you can see we've done here. I've turned it right side out and now I have a little hole. Now that is my window pane. Now we're going to put some organdy behind it and make it an organdy Madeira window pane. First of all, I go in behind the window pane and put a piece of organdy. This is a silk organdy or an organza. Okay, the next step is to do a pin stitch all the way around where the organdy joins the um, linen and then move out, oh, say a fourth of an inch and do another pin stitch and that is a decorative stitch. So in other words, you have two rows of stitching around your window, and then I just go to the back and trim away the excess organdy. I am so happy to have as my guest today my very dear friend and business colleague, Sue Pennington. Sue is a regular columnist for So Beautiful Magazine. She is a wonderful designer and designs so many of the things for uh, So Beautiful as well as for Martha's Sewing Room. And Sue invented this wonderful technique. Sue, welcome to the show. Thank you, Martha. It's a pleasure to be here. The first thing that you will need to do with this technique is to trace your design on here on your fabric with a water-soluble marking pen. Now I'm going to take the water-soluble stabilizer, place it over my marked fabric, and I'm going to straight stitch all around the marked seam line. We'll just use a plain short straight stitch for this. Stitch right on the line. And I'll pivot at the corner and continue stitching all around my marked shape. After I've stitched all the way around my shape, I'm going to cut the center of the shape out. I'll leave about a 1 8 inch seam line and clip all my curves and corners all the way to the stitching line. After I've done that, I need to use the water soluble stabilizer as a facing and I will turn it to the wrong side. 
I will finger press the stabilizer to the inside and that holds it in place a little bit. After I've, I've pressed, finger pressed it all the way around, I'll take my iron and press a sharp crease from the fabric side. You don't want to use the iron on the water soluble stabilizer. So I'll press a sharp crease all the way around. Now a little trick that I use frequently is to bond the water soluble stabilizer to the fabric. To do that I would take some spray starch and from the right side after this is pressed very lightly starch it. Press it dry and then when I lift up the iron the water soluble stabilizer will be bonded to the back of the fabric. It makes a great stabilizer and uh, you probably would not need to use a tearaway stabilizer for anything else. After I have pressed this all the way around I will place my organdy or organza underneath my shape and pin it in place. The very last step is uh, to do the pin stitching. Now on this piece I, you can see that I have the organdy underneath my cut out, my stitched and faced shape. To do a pin stitch I'm going to use a larger needle and for most of my pin stitching I like to use a 100 or 110 universal needle instead of a wing needle. So I'm just using a big big needle for Could this. Can you tell us why you like to use that rather than a wing needle Sue? I prefer a tiny delicate look and uh, shorter stitches work better with the, um, the large needle instead of a wing needle and also I found that occasionally a wing needle may tear laces so when I'm stitching with laces especially I, um, I like to use the, the large needle instead of the, um, the wing needle okay. and it gives a look that looks more like handwork I think. So I'm going to use a pin stitch on my machine and I'm going to stitch from this piece all the way around so that the forward and backward portion of the pin stitch go into the organdy only and the teeth of the pin stitch bite into the linen and catch the linen edge. This secures that folded linen edge in place but we need one more row of stitching after this because if you trim this away right now you would still have that raw seam allowance underneath the water soluble stabilizer. So what I'm going to do is stitch a second row of pin stitching about a quarter of an inch, maybe a little bit less than a quarter of an inch uh, outside the first row so that in this case the teeth point into the center of the organdy window. And option both sets of teeth point toward each other. Okay. Right, both <laughs> sets of teeth point toward each other. <laughs> Another option is uh, instead of the second row of pin stitching to use a row of a machine feather stitch on the outside. That's what I did on the blouse that you showed in the, in the beginning of the segment. After both rows of pin stitching are done, then on the wrong side you will trim away the organdy very close to the stitching and soak the piece in warm water to wash away the water soluble stabilizer. And this pillow again is an example of the finished organdy Madeira window pane. Well, Sue, I just love that technique. It is absolutely not difficult to do, no, although it looks very difficult to do. Yes. Very elegant. Sue, thank you so much for You're sharing welcome. your beautiful organdy Madeira window pane technique with us. Thank you, Martha. And now Sue has a garment construction tip to share with you. Sue, what construction tip would you like to share with us today? Well, Martha, I'm going to show you a foolproof way to turn perfectly sharp square corners. Um, many places in sewing need, uh, need corners, of, such as the top of the placket on this jacket. Collar points are another place that, uh, that are, have, have sharp corners. On this little collar, I have already stitched the seam. Uh, when I use this technique, I stitch all the way to the point, pivot, and continue stitching on the seam. I don't take a little stitch diagonally across the corner um, unless I would be doing a very, very, very sharp point. After it's stitched, I trim the seam and clip it 
an easy way to uh, trim and clip a collar seam like this is in one step is to use a pinking shears. Uh -huh. To turn the corners, what I'm going to do is finger press both seam lines right along the seam line like this. Then I will pick it up, take a tweezers, slide the tweezers underneath between the layers of fabric, hold that seam allowance down, and then turn my point, holding those seam allowances together. And can you see what a beautiful sharp corner that makes? By holding the seam allowances with tweezers, yes. I certainly can. And there's no bulk at all. The seam allowances are not pushed in together and bunched together. They're just folded very nice and flat. This can also be used for, with Madeira applique. A lot of times you do this on a scalloped skirt with a water-soluble stabilizer facing. Again, fold the seam allowances together right along the stitching line, slide the tweezers between the two layers, and hold the seam allowances together with the point of the tweezers, and then turn them, let go of the tweezers, you have a perfectly nice point. It also works very well with bulkier fabrics. This is a suit weight fabric. Uh, like a, a jacket would be, and this is a facing for it. Once again, fold the seam allowances together along the stitching line, use the tweezers, and turn, and you have a wonderful square corner, even on a bulky fabric. Oh, so that is a wonderful trick. It's very easy. Thank Works you every so time. much. Thank you very and much. And next I have a craft for you. Dyeing lace or silk ribbon is really not that much trouble to do. And the home deck project I have for you next requires hand tinted or hand dyed lace. So here's how you do it. See here this pretty lace? It has the darker pink at the bottom and then it just kind of uh, bled up. You just put lots of dye on at the bottom then let it just seep up and then we left the ecru lace at the top. First of all, you're going to need a cold water dye. We have this one that was just for fabrics and crafts, and it's available at any craft store. Now, here I have two pieces of lace, and I've put a little wax paper underneath it to keep it from seeping through, and lots of newspapers on the table in case my dye turns over. All right, in order to uh, dye the lace, you can put just a little bit on and just move across with just a little bit and let it seep up. Or, of course, you could put a lot more on if you want it to be a little darker. Okay, there's that piece. Now let's come up here and work on this piece. Just a little bit at the bottom, and it will seep up. So if you want it to be just kind of variegated the way we had on the lace I showed you right at the beginning of this segment, and the lace we'll be using on the next show, you just put it darker at the bottom, and then let it seep up. And you can see on this one how, it has, how it's begun to seep up a little bit. You could also, if you wanted to, just do a little bit of the dye in the, um, see in the rows there? Now I probably won't get it exactly in that rose. Oh, no, no, that's pretty good. So if I wanted just to do roses and just dye a figure in the lace, I, could, I would probably use a little bit smaller brush. Or if I just wanted to do the flowers or the leaves over here with a smaller brush, you see you can dye the lace, let it dry, and then you have a beautiful hand-tinted lace. By the way, I did use rubber gloves on this one. And now I'm going to share with you the home decorating pillow where we use the beautifully hand-tinted pink lace. I think you are going to love this beautiful pillow. Just look at the decorative details. Not only do we have the beautiful hand-painted lace all the way around, and this is a heavy sort of a Clooney lace. I've used tapestry and a wonderful, wonderful gold machine embroidered design in the middle, and even a little heart, a little charm that has been tied and attached. You know what this pillow reminds me of? Those really expensive ones in the really expensive stores. Now, can you see the detail here? There are some of the little tapestry figures which have been cut out and pressed down and then stitched down. Well, let me just show you how this pillow is put together. It's really very easy. And you know something? I've seen pillows like this that were in the $100 to $200 price range. Now, needless to say, I never bought one, but we certainly are glad to bring you pillows that I believe look like those 
several hundred dollar ones in the expensive stores. First of all, we have to do a little patchwork. In order to make the center of the pillow, I want this wonderful um, lavender silk dupioni in the center. And by the way, that's what I'll do my machine embroidery on. And then here's this beautiful, beautiful tapestry with all kinds of wonderful colors of lavender and green. And, and there's even a blackberry and kind of a purple and beige. How pretty can you get? Now then, what I'm going to do in order to make those pretty little corners, I'm going to use a paper-backed fusible and cut out some of the designs out of the tapestry. Can you see there's a, there's a design there and there's a rose and, and then here's some of the blackberries are here. Well, I have put, I've cut out the design. First of all, you put the paperback uh, fusible on the back of the tapestry. Then I have cut out the designs and then after I've Here's another one of the designs, and oh, I think we have a few more in here. Let me get some of these out for you. Whatever designs you would like, you simply cut out. Then after you uh, get them cut out, let me bring my little pillow back here. After you get the designs cut out, you simply decide where you want them to be. Pull off your paper-backed fusible, put them in the place where you want them on the top. This is kind of just like... Um, applique, except it's really easy applique. Then I will bring my iron in, and I will, not on the finished pillow, by the way, and I will fuse them, and that's all there is to making them permanently attached, and then using a clear thread, an invisible thread, I will stitch right around those raw edges, but it's not going anywhere because those raw edges are fused. And then you have this perfectly elegant, beautiful, beautiful pillow combining some of my favorite things to do, which is machine embroidery, patchwork, and the use of beautiful lace. And now we have some silk ribbon stitches by hand for you. I'm so pleased to have as my guest today my very dear friend and business colleague, Beverly Sheldrick. Beverly is one of the most renowned needle artists in the world today. She has written a book. She frequently publishes not only in So Beautiful magazine, but in other worldwide needlework publications. And she teaches at the Martha Pullen School of Art Fashion in Huntsville. Beverly, it is so good to have you back on the show. Oh, thank you, Martha. It's just always such a pleasure to be here with you and to have the opportunity to speak with your viewers. Now, Martha, today we're going, I'm going to show your viewers the, uh, this lovely carnation. And you will see that I have used your new pattern. I have lowered the neckline just a little and put just a little lace band around there to provide something to tie those um, flowers together and also just a little bit around the sleeve. So let's see how we do these very pretty carnations. Now, first of all, we're going to draw a little shape and I would ask your viewers to draw it either in something which is wash away or in pencil, which is what I normally do. If I want the, the flower to go that way, then you can see it goes that way. If I want it to go the other way, then I'll do my little drawing the other way. Now here you will see number two. I have taken my ribbon and I have whipped approximately, I suppose, a generous half inch. And then I will take the stitch down on this corner point, come back up again with that in its machine uh, thread that I'm using. I will whip back and go back in there. The needle will go in behind here like that. Now our next sample here, you will see that I have got a piece of thread there. I have got a piece of ribbon there like that. And I will bring this thread and I'll just show you how to do it like that. This will go down in there and I will tighten that thread and bring this back down here. And it will be that thread that will hold it in position as you see it here. Then I'm going to take that thread, which um, use either a st single strand or two strands of stranded cotton. And I've done an elongated feather stitch it just quite roughly. Don't try to do beautiful stitches because they will not look right. Now, we'll just, you can see here, I've got the completed ones, a full carnation, just a half carnation. Now that bud or half carnation is used like this. You just, instead of being the full circle like that, it comes up there 
just a little round and back there like that. It's not the full circle at all. And also, of course, a lot less ruffling. So you can see how I've done it here. You can see how I've started here to just do ooh, those little whip stitches like this. It's just those little whip stitches, very simple. Then you will see on this side here how I've taken the thread, stitch it, stitched it down at this point there. Then that will be folded back like that way. And then I'll whip all my way back there and take this down underneath there like that. Now you will see here we have again this section has been done. I've got my thread here. I've actually already formed my loop and this will go through here like that and that will hold that down like that and you will see just like that which will hold it firmly and here I have my stitch ready to make these elongated feather stitches and just do them really quite roughly. I like to, sometimes I'll do quite a big stitch like that. Other times it'll be smaller, just whatever I want it to do. But don't be tempted to make them too short. And if you're putting it on clothing and you are a little nervous about the length of these stitches, then you can, if you wish, just go back with your little thread and put just a little catch stitch like this, that will make it appear as though you've got just little knobs. And you know, carnations are a bit like that. So these wee knobs really do serve two purposes. But it, it is a, a flower that you don't see very often, um, but it just does look, I think, really very, very pretty. Um, I debated whether I was going to put some more on the on the sleeve and I decided against it because I just felt that it would distract from that quite strong design that you have around that neckline. So that's why we didn't put any more. <laughs> you know, Beverly, I'd like for you to tell our viewers and I, several years ago you told our viewers one really good way to get um, ideas for colors. Oh. Would you share that with the viewers again? Well, of course, um, you can't beat nature, can you? Yes. Uh, is the best place. Another time, if I'm unsure about shadings, then I look at wallpapers. It's Wall quite papers. surprising. I believe you said something about China also. Oh, yes. Antique well, of course, China, I'm maybe. always looking at, <laughs> at antique China for designs and for colors. If you're not sure if they'll work, try looking at some <laughs> antique china. <laughs> Thank you so much for being here, Beverly. And now won't you join me in my attic? This nightgown has one of, most, one of the most beautiful sleeves I've ever seen in my life. But before we get to the sleeve, look how pretty the bodice is. And by the way, the back is exactly like the front. See the little round circular motif? And then the little piece, the little square piece that's put in the front? The same type of piece is on the shoulders. But I want to just show you how interesting this sleeve is. I'm going to hold it up for you. It is a square, what it actually looks like a handkerchief, which it isn't, but it's a square piece that the um, sleeve hole around, you know, to, to go around the elbow has been cut out, and then all those really pretty trims. But isn't that an interesting sleeve with just the square piece? By the way, it also has one row of insertion and two rows of edging. In other words, edging stitched down on top of edging. Thank you for coming to my sewing room today and I'd like to invite you back next time.